this program. First, I would like to seek your cooperation for the successful completion of the program. For that, kindly switch off to avoid interruption. And you can pin the talker and the video presentation slide for better viewing experience. There will be a space for discussion after endowment speech. So be active listener and prepare with your concerns and doubts on the topic. Those who join via YouTube live can post their questions as comments and we will discuss it on session. Prabhashna Sarnayda, they are in the camera in my endowment of Prabhashna Initiation. Suja, so, can you hear me? We can start the program. Yes, sir. Let's begin. A very warm good morning to one and all. We appreciate you taking time out your busy schedule to join us today. To begin this program, let us have the pleasure of listening to the opening remarks. May I request Dr. P.M. Girish, head of the Malayala Department, University of Madras, renowned linguist, Excellent teacher to deliver the welcome address. Please. Hello. I hope that you can hear me. Very good morning to one and all present here. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to the Chennai Malayali KPC Endowment Lecture 2022. Today's programs actually as about more than 30 participants participate from the various department of university of madras and other states making the event a truly national venture the department has five endowment lectures program we have already conducted three of them online mon due to the pandemic situation This endowment means the, the Chennai Malayali KPSC Golden Jubilee Celebration Endowment has long way since 2005 and the inaugural endowment lecture was delivered by Patma Vibhushan, Dr. Dhananjayan along with Dr. Shanda Dhananjayan. We have come a long way in making the endowment a huge success with its celebrities and other eminent speakers. This endowment mainly focuses on theater and performance since it is executed by the Chennai Malayalis, the lovers of theater and performance. And the endowment holds special value because this is the first noted by the migrant linguistic minority settled in Chennai. I am thankful to them and I welcome all of them to the program. I should mention that this endowment was established during the headship of Dr. C.G. Rajendra Babu, he presented here, the film personality and an eminent scholar. Actually, still, he is the positive spirit of the Department of Malayala. I welcome, sir. I also welcome the president of this program, 
श्री एस एस पिले फेमस एजुकेशनलिस्ट एंड एक्टिविटीज एक्टिविस्ट टू दि प्रोग्राम ही विल प्रिसाइड ओवर दिस सेशन वी आर प्राउड टू अनाउंस टूडे that the distinguished theater personality and social activity activist dr mange is going to deliver the endowment lecture 2002 along with her the department is really honored with her presence i welcome you madam dr rakesh sandosh my friend and colleague due to some personal problems he is not able to take part in the program i welcome him also though Uh, i also welcome ms mehana sarjan our mphil student who is going to extend the vote of thanks in this program in this context i would also like to inform you that the attractive brochures of the endowments is designed to by our beloved student vishnu pavitran i'm thankful to him really and the open window the research forum the department of malayalam also extended their assistance to conduct the program as you know the entire program is taking place on a digital platform sri tojo sebastian is providing the technical assistance for conduct the program in a professional manner i welcome him also i welcome all the participants kindly uh, uh, actually participate this program thank you so much thank you dr p m girish you are thought provoking welcome address such a perfect platform for the program thank you once again distinguished participants may i now request education consultant and secretary general of kshina Sri S S P L to address our esteemed participants for the endowment lecture. Please sir. Doctor P Patma, Doctor Rajendra Babu, Doctor Gidish, Doctor Sandosh. എല്ലാവർക്കും ഈ കെ പി എസ് സി എൻഡോവ്മെൻറ്റ് ലെക്ചറിൻ്റെ പശ്ചാത്തലത്തിൽ നമ്മൾക്കൊരിക്കൽ കൂടി കാണാൻ കഴിഞ്ഞതിലുള്ള സന്തോഷം പങ്കുവെക്കുകയാണ് ആണ്ടിൽ ഒരിക്കൽ നമ്മൾ ഈ ഒരു പ്രത്യേക സന്ദർഭത്തിൽ ഒന്നിച്ചു കൂടാറുണ്ട് കൊറോണയുടെ പശ്ചാത്തലത്തിൽ അകലങ്ങളിലിരിക്കുകയാണെങ്കിൽ പോലും നമ്മൾക്ക് ഈ അവസരം പ്രത്യേകിച്ചും ഇത്തരമൊരു പരിപാടിയുടെ അധ്യക്ഷനാകുന്ന കാര്യത്തിൽ ഒരു പ്രത്യേക സന്തോഷമാണ് കാരണം എ പി എസ് സി എന്ന് പറയുന്ന കേരളത്തിലെ മഹത്തായ നാടക പ്രസ്ഥാനവും മദ്രാശിയിലെ മദ്രാസ് യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു ബന്ധം വളരെ അത്യപൂർവമായി കാണാവുന്ന ഒന്നാണ് പക്ഷേ ഈ ബന്ധം സ്ഥാപിച്ചെടുക്കാൻ നമുക്ക് കഴിഞ്ഞതിലുള്ള സന്തോഷം പങ്കുവയ്ക്കുന്നതോടൊപ്പം ഈ എൻഡോവ്മെൻറ്റിന് തന്നെ ഒരു പ്രത്യേകത ഉള്ളതും നമ്മൾ മനസ്സിലാക്കുക ഇത് ചെന്നൈ മലയാളി സ്റ്റെപ് പി എസ് സി എൻഡോവ്മെൻ്റ് ആണ് അത് ഒരു നഗരത്തിലെ മലയാളികളുടെ എല്ലാം ചേർന്ന് ഒരു എൻഡോവ്മെൻറ്റ് അതാണ് അതിൻ്റെ പ്രത്യേകത അങ്ങനെയൊന്ന് വേറെ എവിടെയെങ്കിലും ഉണ്ടോ എന്നറിയില്ല നമ്മൾ കെ പി എസ് സിയുടെ അൻപതാം പിറന്നാൾ ഇവിടെ കൊണ്ടാടുകയും 
അത് ഇന്ത്യയിൽ മറ്റുള്ള മറ്റ് കേരളം ഉൾപ്പെടെ മറ്റ് എവിടെയും നടക്കാത്തത്ര വിഭവമായി നമുക്ക് ഉണ്ടാകാൻ കഴിയുകയും അതിൽ നിന്നും നമ്മൾ നേടിയെടുത്ത ഫണ്ട് മദ്രാശിയിലെ മദ്രാസ് യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റിയുടെ ഒരു എൻഡോൾമെൻ്റ് ആയിട്ട് മാറ്റുകയും ചെയ്യുകയാണ് ചെയ്തിരി ചെയ്തതായിരുന്നു അത് അതാണ് ചെന്നൈ മലയാളികളുടെ എൻഡോൾമെൻ്റ് ആയത് അതിൽ ഇന്ന് ഡോക്ടർ വി പത്മ എൻഡോൾമെൻ്റ് ലക്ഷ്യം നടത്താൻ ഇവിടെ എത്തിയിട്ടുണ്ട് മറ്റ് നമ്മുടെ സുഹൃത്തുക്കളെല്ലാം ഉണ്ട് ആണ്ടിലൊഴിച്ച് നടക്കുന്ന ഈ ഒരു സംരംഭം വിജയകരമായി നടത്താൻ നമുക്ക് ഭാവിയിലും കഴിയട്ടെ എന്ന് ആശംസിച്ചുകൊണ്ട് ഇതിൻ്റെ അധ്യക്ഷൻ എന്നുള്ള നിലയിൽ എല്ലാവരെയും ഒരിക്കൽ കൂടി ഇതിലേക്ക് ക്ഷണിച്ചുകൊണ്ട് സന്തോഷത്തോട് ക്ഷണിച്ചുകൊണ്ട് ഞാൻ എൻ്റെ ഈ ഉപക്രമ പ്രസംഗം നിർത്തുകയാണ് നന്ദി നമസ്കാരം to listen to you again in future events thank you once again sir because of some um, unavoidable emergency dr ortiz sir our beloved teacher was not able to attend to deliver the introduction to the speaker please but being a great teacher and a responsible coordinator he has given an introduction video from the speaker this was video മങ്കൈ സൂര്യനിവ് ഓഫ് ഡോക്ടർ പത്മ വെങ്കട്ടരാമൻ ഇസ് എ ചെന്നൈ ബേസ്ഡ് സ്കോളർ ആൻഡ് തിയേറ്റർ പ്രാക്ടീഷണർ ഷി ടീച്ചേഴ്സ് ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് അറ്റ് സ്റ്റെല്ല മേരീസ് കോളേജ് ചെന്നൈ ഇന്ത്യ ആസ് എൻ അക്കാഡമിക് ഷി ഹാസ് ടോട്ട് ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് ലിറ്ററേച്ചർ theater and performing studies at various colleges and universities across India besides regularly contributing to regional national and international journals and magazines as a scholar she has written on Tamil theater theater history culture history and a range of other subjects she has written directed and performed in various plays with her group Marupache she initiated steps to found off She was a founder member of Chennai Kale Guru, one of India's most important street theatre groups. Mangai has published a collection of essays on women in Tamil literature and theatre and is the translator for Our Lives, Our Words, a collection of first-person accounts by members of the transgender Hijra communities around the state of Tamil Nadu. She also translated Terigadda, a canonical Pali text of Elder Nuns vs. Hindu Tamil. Her recent monograph, Acting Up Ginger and Theatre in India, is the first critical work of its kind to be published in English. She has co-edited with Taban Basu and Indranil Acharya, also a collection of writings by Dalit authors titled Listen to the Flames, text and readings from the margins. Mangai also translates fiction and non-fiction from Tamil into English and vice versa. She has twice been a recipient of Fulbright Fellowships to work on theatre and gender. She taught the course drama from other worlds, King Alfred's College, Manchester. Owing in 2009, Rockefeller Bellagio Residency, she worked on her monograph on gender and theatre in India. Respect her, ma'am. We cordially invite you for endowment lecture. Welcome ma'am.
Thank you for your attention. Star shine at night. Some star shine at bright daylight. It's our pleasure and honor to welcome one such star, Dr. Padma Vendraman, Monday, Honorable Chief Guest of today's KPAC Endowment. Welcome, dear man. Thank you so much. Um, I hope I'm clear. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. yeah, it was really embarrassing to watch <laughs> that introduction video. Uh, thank you so much. I'm so happy to see Dr. Rajendra Babu, an old friend. Um, I mean, we have, we have known each other for over 25 years uh, as part of Madras University, and he has also been seen many of my plays and productions um, and vice versa, I should say. So it's a mutual uh, respect and admiration that we share. Thanks to Dr. Girish. Um, I mean, when unfortunately we needed to shift the date, I recall the empathy and the compassion with which he immediately um, accepted. Uh, I guess there is no way, you know, when times are too difficult. We all learn to cope with all that. Thank you, Girish. I mean, I, I'm just moved. And um, which is one of the reasons that I really wanted to fulfill the commitment uh, at the earliest. Uh, I'm also happy for the student friends and others who have joined here. And um, Kerala has always been uh, one of the places where we have developed a lot of solidarities, um, not just theater people, but feminists, women's movement, and others, uh, and literature. And especially in Chennai, Kerala Samajam were, was and is always a haven for theater people. I'm sure Pralayan would agree with that. I mean, we have all met there right from rehearsals to performances to workshops and the rest, and Kerala Samajam has always welcomed us. So it has always been um, a very heartfelt, warm relationship that we share. And I'm extremely happy to be part of this uh, endowment lecture. I deem it a great honor. Thank you so much. So I'm going to begin and share uh, both as a performer and as an academician. So uh, it would be, um, I request you all to pin the presentation so that you can see the PowerPoint. Um, so this is the title that I've given myself. Um, many of us might wonder uh, why or how is it different? Because I mean, one of the things that I always say is, whether you are a man, male or female or trans or queer, when you are on stage, you really perform. And as all of us know, in gender theory, Judith Butler's famous word, performativity, the gender is performative. So all of us who think we are cisgendered and we are naturally mas male and therefore masculine and female and therefore feminine, or also performing our genders in a particular way, you know. So at different ages, I think, I mean, we not only perform gender, we also perform culture, including the way I'm presenting myself today, you know, a sari and I keep a bindi. Um, so there is a way in which performativity is built in our everyday lives, but we are going to restrict it to what we see on stage. Next slide. So I'm just going to talk about, uh, I mean, want to give you a very brief overview and then move on to examples. So there are many uh, semiotic codes, what we call as codes, which is a sign system, which helps the sender of a message to communicate to the receiver of the message. I'm, I'm, I'm just simplifying the whole thing. So out of that, these are the four uh, it's like the spine, spine, the backbone of any anything that goes up on stage. So it will be body, space, forms, and images. Now the body, 
I, I mean, of course, there is a literal body, even though it is a virtual space. There is a body that is listening. There are many bodies that are listening. There is a body that is talking. And there are a lot of these present day, what we are trying to do, the way I move my hand, everything comes under body. But that is not all. Body, at least in English, also means a body of people. So this is the department of Malayalam people. Malayalam speaking people and uh, who somehow connect to Kerala at some point, whether it is a first generation, second generation, third generation, whatever. You can also think of a body in terms of your caste, community, language, nation. So the, if I'm going to be traveling abroad and I'm talking, I would be seen as an Indian present, you know. Uh, whereas here, probably, I would be somebody who is belonging to Tamana. So the body is, is a very expansive kind of term that we are talking. And all of that play on stage. All of that come up on stage, even in film. So which is why we refer to a film based on colonial writer like E.M. Foster's Passage to India. But just the way the actor stands leaning on a door can tell you whether she is from America or Britain or Australia. And all three of them have a very different relationship to colonialism. It really strikes us. And then we have a space and most often the drama, the theater space is divided according to the way the space is organized. All of us think the moment you talk about theater, it is performed on stage and audience sit probably in the dark, almost like a cinema theater. But then I think uh, in theater, space is very different. There are still uh, Kudiyatam happening in Guruvayur. And if you go there, it is a particular kind of theater happening at a specific time in a temple. And the audience can sit on three sides. And the musicians sit on one side, you know. And unlike in cinema, where the people who are privileged audience sit at the back because you're supposed to be distant from the screen when you're watching film. But then when you're watching theater, the privileged people sit literally in the box, in the orchestra box, you know, closer to watch everything that is happening. But that's not the case with Shakespearean stage because in Shakespearean stage, they are sitting on the boxes, but the people who pay less will be standing and watching. They will be grounded. So there are many, many kinds of theater, and that is what we mean by space. But there is also a space on stage. So on the stage, if I want to show intimacy, and we don't have a camera which can give you a, a close-up shot, then you're still trying to show your intimacy. And the, the gap that you give between two characters and the way they look at each other, the way the body leans forward, you know, supposing somebody is, let's say, proposing to a woman and then the woman is not very sure and she, she just takes two steps back. That is enough to tell you that the proposal is not perhaps mutual or there is still something to be worked on it. Now, added to it, we have performing arts, right, from folk arts, ritualistic art forms, and what we call as modern slash contemporary. And in Tamil, we have Tolgapiyam, which has a chapter on Meipadu. And you have somebody like Ayapa Panikar, who actually uses the Tinei concept in Tamil to really read world literature. So there are various ways in which the forms have a grammar of their own. You refer to Dhanajayan, so you have Natya Shastra, but it doesn't remain static. They keep changing. The forms also have a life of their own. So if I'm going to really give you a scene where I'm going to say, okay, a newborn child is there, I don't have to do anything. It's enough if I just say, then you know that it is a lullaby and you're talking about a child in a cradle. And with all these things, the body, space and form, 
what we do is to create images. Now, all these can be traditional, all these can be conservative. You can also work against the grain and make it into suggesting newer ways of looking at the body and the space and the form and the images on stage, which is exactly what I think um, gender is going to do. Now, this is the technical aspects of uh, the theater itself, the performance space on stage. Can we move to the next slide? <clears throat> so within this, then we move to how are we going to look at the various uh, content that is being presented on stage. So one of the uh, obvious things would be the roles which we get from the various plays that you're talking about. But then if you really notice, the roles also seem to have uh, a certain type. So you can have a typology. You can have a, a Shringara Rasa and you have a lover uh, and you're to, uh, making her wait for the uh, person. You know, so the roles are, or you can have a Shurpanaga character where, you know, she's not somebody that you would call as a hero. So you would probably kind of imagine her as somebody. So in, in terms of gender, if you apply it to the roles, you have a very stereotyped, uh, acceptable gender norms in our society where a woman is submissive, obedient, beautiful, coy, shy, name it. You know, so that is an acceptable kind of a role. But you also know that both in life as well as uh, on stage, we have roles which can be... Um, roles that are really questioning the stereotype. The classic among them will be Antigone in Greek theater, where uh, she resisted the power of the state, of course, for her brother. And I think all of us know what it means to give a decent burial, which has become a very, very political discourse today, especially with Corona. We saw the river Ganges floating with corpses. So, you know, these roles which are fixed, whether it is positive or negative, are uh, very constrictive. They don't really allow you to explore that space. And then I'm, I also think that uh, on stage, whatever we are presenting, also have a relevance. So what is, what is really important today? So you But you can actually talk about uh, male members of the society who are taking advantage of a woman who has probably had a Gandharva relationship and you have, you have created a relationship and she becomes pregnant, but you don't know that and you leave. So the Shakuntala of Kalidasa can actually be a reading of contemporary gender responsibility in intimate relationships. So it is, it is up to you to make it um, relevant and uh, make it have a contemporary relevance because theater is about the here and the now. The text can be from whichever country, very far away. The time period can be very, very different. But then what we need is to actually create relevance for the text. And then we also have identities. Now, these identities are where we are all usually stuck because uh, in, uh, if you're going to be very traditional in that sense, then there are many identities that are left out because we live in a feudal casteist society where you don't allow the Dalits to enter the temple. So your characters playing the Dalits are also very, very limited. But the text you have, you have a Karnabaram written by uh, Basa, which was first discovered in Trivandrum. So, uh, the ER efforts to really, the more uh, relevant it becomes and the more open and porous the roles become. 
then I move on to the next slide. Now the question is how 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 are we in the context of the body space form and everything and the roles and the relevance? What are the ways in which you can gender a body on stage? Now I'm just choosing a few of them. One is to revision myths, which is which has nothing to do with you being a woman. We recently lost uh, Shaoli Mitra, who was the daughter of the Ipta famous couple, Shambhu Mitra and Tipti Mitra. And she did this play called Nathabati Anathabat on Draupadi, which is really saying, yes, of course, Draupadi had five husbands and probably one lover, that was Karna. But uh, none of them were there for her. She was there for them. But none of them were there. So it was, it was a, one of the brilliant performances that Shaoli Mitra gave to us. You also have Girish Karnat, who is reinterpreting Hayavadana or Nagamandala. So revisioning myths is one of the ways by which you can actually gender. I'll come back to the question about how, even though Girish Karnat has opened up the space of mythology, not all his plays are very, very gender sensitive. You know, we'll come to that later. You also have to revisit the forms, especially for gender, because as you know, many art forms don't allow women to perform. So, and we we still have female impersonation, which I'm going to be talking about. But I, I mean, I would treat it as one of the aspects of um, a particular performing style. You know, so I'm I'm not upset that women were not allowed. But wherever women are allowed, you are allowed to cry when you do an opari. You are allowed to sing lullaby or you can do kaikutukal. You know, and we can do kummi in Tamil Nadu. We can do garba dance in Gujarat. So that is the only form pan-Indian where you have women standing in a circle, clapping hands and doing the performance. Otherwise, you don't really have... Um, uh, women who are performing. So the forms themselves need to be questioned. For example, the recent very, very famous uh, song on uh, released by Arivur, Enjai Enjami, you listen to it. There are many forms, but there you also have an opari, keening, you know, which is put in by a young male rap singer from uh, from Tamil Nadu and uh, with origins in Sri Lanka. So there are ways in which you can play around with the form, which is, I think, the challenge and the beauty of uh, stage performances. You also have history, which is a very, very huge uh, weight that is there um, and is also something that we need to keep going back to every time, you know, I mean, one of the best examples of uh, historical reference was Rahul Gandhi's talk at the parliament, which is creating waves, because he's basically saying you cannot see yourself as the Mughal ruler who can walk into South India, especially to Tamil Nadu and think that you can take over the state, you know, so the moment he mentions that, then you're getting invaders people who come and take over the land. So there are all these historical things, baggage that we imagine that. And then we also have sexuality, where you can have masculine, feminine, trans, queer, all identities that are part of the debate on sexuality and gender that we can actually talk about. Now, I'm just going to kind of use certain examples by different people. I'm also kind of restricted by the available visuals that uh, I could manage uh, in this. So what I'm going to share with you first will be a play performed by Kanayalal and Sabitri's group called Kalakshetra in Manipur. Now, this is a play, a play version of Maheshwata Devi's Draupadi, which is about the two tri the tribal. She's a tribal woman and is part of the um, Marxist-Leninist movement in Bengal in the 70s. So Maheshwata Devi builds it based on that. And what we are going to see is towards the end, Dopti or Draupati, the tribal woman, 
who is encountered by the police, how does she really counter the authority of power? Now, remember the old Mahabharata uh, Draupadi who just lifted her hand up and started praying to Krishna and Krishna gave her saris after saris after saris. Unfortunately, not all Draupadis get saris. You know, I mean, Krishna is too busy, so Krishna can't come for all women. Uh, and not all women can just put their hands up and hope for a Krishna to save. So you're going to see what this person did. And, and uh, we will connect it to the politics of Manipur later. So we will see the first video clip of Draupadi. So much, Tojo. So this particular, um, uh, you can go back to the text and read it, but um, what it really does is to um, talk about nudity or naked women becoming a threat to state power. Now, this play was, uh, this story was written long ago. Kanelal did it as a play. But what happened in Manipur, as all of us know, a highly militarized kind of state. And uh, in 2004, when Manorama, one of the activists was killed on the street and her body, uh, there were five bullets shot into her vagina and she was torn into pieces on the main road. And then the, the women, the Mera babies, who are the women of Manipur, who wanted to shift uh, the military office, the AFSPA office on that road, did one of these amazing struggles that all of us know about. So can we have the sixth slide, please? Yeah, I'm sure you can see it. This is one of the most sensitively taken uh, photographs in the country that I think. And these are women who are all 
not young uh, women who have a titillating body. These are women. These are mothers. But then this is what they did and they achieved. So Afspa office was shifted from Kangla Fort. But Kanelal himself faced a lot of criticism when he first did the play because they thought Sabitri being Kanelal's wife, he allowed her to go naked on stage for that split second. And there are a lot of things that are written about. There is a economic times, I think, I'm not so sure, where he wrote how this particular performance, I'm sure none of these Mira babies had read about Kanela's performance. They might have heard, but uh, they, they might not have seen. But then when Savitri uh, does that role, and she herself is a Mera baby, now this becomes almost like what all theatre people think uh, we can do, predict what is going to happen. A kind of a visionary statement about what will happen in the society, a kind of a subtopian uh, imagination, but that happened in Manipur in 2004. You know, so this is uh, one of the ways in which I think the myth can be reimagined or reconceptualized. We'll go to the next uh, point where we are talking about the space. So very often, I think um, the space that we think of on stage is, has, has to be beautiful, just like our houses. So you have the living room, which will all be very pakka, you clean it, everything. But then, you know, usually we don't allow everyone to walk into our bedroom. You certainly don't allow people to walk into the kitchen. But then somebody like Neela Manse, who, who lives in Chandigarh and who has a data company called The Company, and she also taught in Punjab University uh, theater and was a great uh, she was inspired by B.V. Karan, one of our greatest musicians and theater persons from Karnataka. So she did a play called Kitchen Katha. And in Kitchen Katha, it is now one of the old tales where what you eat, what goes into your stomach, also decides what kind of emotion you feel in your heart and therefore what kind of thoughts get into your mind. So there are a lot of folk tales dealing with what you eat. Now, there is also a Mexican novel called Like Water for Chocolate, written by Laura S. Pavel. So what Neela Man Singh does is to bring the two together. And she produced this play, Kitchen Katha, and brought the kitchen on stage, which nobody has ever seen. It is clumsy. It is cluttered. Um, but it gives you an experience of smell, of sound, of activities that you can never find in an other stage which is so beautifully executed. Now, if we have the time, we are going to come back to our way where the point I want to make is that when you are presenting things on stage and when you are doing a director's course, everybody tells you, okay, divide the stage into nine and the important space that you want to give should be in the center. Now, I'm not so sure because in the play Away, which is based on Sangam poetry, and Away is one of the bards, I don't think she was a character who wanted to be in the center always. So the clip, if you get to see it, you will see how you, you can also traditionally in a direction course. But we will watch Neela Man Singh Chowdhury's Kitchen Katana. किचन कथा किस तरह आइडिया आया किस तरह मैं कीता मैंने आज हरांगी हूँ दी है बहुत साला तो आई वाज थिंकिंग कि कोई प्रोडक्शन करनी है अबाउट द रिलेशनशिप ऑफ विमेन विथ फूड एंड द किचन फूड एस अ लीड मोटिव फूड एस फूड फूड एस एंथ्रोपोलॉजी फूड एस कल्चरल हिस्ट्री शी इज टेकिंग दोस Extraordinary. I've always been fascinated when I go to the vegetable market. Just to see a anarnu katto do hisya vich. 
ਤੇ ਇੰਨਾ ਕੁਝ ਮੈਟਾਫਰਸ ਬੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਆਈ ਸਪੋਕ ਟੂ ਸੁਜੀਤ ਪਾਤਰ ਇਸ ਇਸ ਫਿਰ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਲੱਗਦਾ ਕਿ ਪੈਨ ਦੀ ਬਜਾਏ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਕਰਚੀ ਨਾਲ ਉਹ ਨਾਟਕ ਲਿਖਣਾ ਪਏਗਾ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਮੈਂ ਬਾਰ-ਬਾਰ ਕਹਿੰਦੀ ਸੀ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਉਹ ਜਿਹਾ ਪਲੇ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਹੈ ਜਿਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਖੁਸ਼ਬੂ ਆਏ ਤਨੀਏ ਦੀ ਪੁਦੀਨੇ ਦੀ ਜ਼ੀਰਾ ਪੁੰਨ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਮਸਾਲੇ ਯੂ نو ਰੋਸਟ ਹੋ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਕਿਤਾਬਾਂ ਪੜੀਆਂ ਔਰ ਇੱਕ ਨੋਵਲ ਲੈਟਨ ਅਮਰੀਕਨ ਰਾਈਟਰ ਦੀ ਲਾਈਕ ਵਾਟਰ ਫॉर ਚਾਕਲੇਟ ਉਹ ਮੈਂ ਪੜੀਆ ਇਟ ਵਾਸ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਲੈਟਨ ਅਮਰੀਕਨ ਫੈਮਿਲੀ ਐਂਡ ਇਟ ਹੈਡ ਆਲ ਟੂ ਡੂ ਵਿਦ ਫੂਡ ਰੈਸਪੀਜ਼ ਕਿ ਕਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਫੂਡ ਇੱਕ ਕੰਡਿਊਟ ਬਣ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਰਿਸ਼ਤੇ ਦਾ ਲਵ ਦਾ ਸੈਕਸ਼ੂਅਲਿਟੀ ਦਾ ਜਜ਼ਬਾਤ ਦਾ ਪਾਵਰ ਦਾ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਪੂਰੇ ਜੋ ਯੁੱਧ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਆ ਘਰ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਹ ਕਿਚਨ ਪੋਲਿਟਿਕਸ ਜੋ ਸੀ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਆ ਉਹ ਚੌਕੇ ਤੋਂ ਹੀ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਆ ਆਈ ਵਾਂਟਿਡ ਐਕਚੁਅਲ ਕੁਕਿੰਗ ਔਨ ਦ ਸਟੇਜ ਐਟ ਦਾ ਮਤਲਬ ਸਟੇਜ ਟਾਈਮ ਐਂਡ ਕੁਕਿੰਗ ਟਾਈਮ ਦਾ ਇੱਕ ਕੋਰਿਲੇਸ਼ਨ ਬਣਾਉਣਾ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਕੱਚਾ ਖਾਣਾ ਤੇ ਦਰਸ਼ਕਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਖਿਲਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਸਕਦੇ ਸਾਰੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਗਾਣੇ ਸੀ ਉਹ ਸਾਰੀ ਰੈਸਪੀਸ ਸੀ ਪੂਰੇ ਜੋ ਕਾਰਨ ਜੀ ਨੇ ਮਿਊਜ਼ੀਕਲ ਇਨਸਟਰੂਮੈਂਟਸ ਇਸਤੇਮਾਲ ਕੀਤੇ ਉਹ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾਤਰ ਪੀਸਣਾ ਕੁੱਟਣਾ ਛੌਂਕਣਾ ਉਹ ਸਾਰੇ ਸਾਊਂਡਸ ਦਾ ਇਸਤੇਮਾਲ ਕੀਤਾ ਆਪਣੀ 뮤지컬 ਕੰਪੋਜੀਸ਼ਨਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਕਲ ਉਹ ਯੂ ਐਕਟਰ ਜਲੇਬੀਆਂ ਵੀ ਬਣਾ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਔਰ ਗਾਣਾ ਵੀ ਗਾ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਔਰ 뮤지컬 ਇਨਸਟਰੂਮੈਂਟਸ ਵੀ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਤੁਮੇ ਦਾ ਵੀ ਧਿਆਨ ਰੱਖਣਾ ਪੈਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਕਿੰਨਾ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਖਾਓ ਔਰ ਕਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਡਾਇਲੌਗ ਬੋਲੋ ਐਦਾ ਮਤਲਬ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਡਾਈਜੈਸਟਿਵ ਸਿਸਟਮ ਔਰ ਤੁਹਾਡੀ ਸਪੀਚ ਦਾ ਇੱਕ ਟੈਕਨੀਕ ਉਹਦਾ ਤਾਲਮੇਲ ਹੋਣਾ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਹੈ ਸੋ ਇਟ ਵਾਸ ਕੁਆਇਟ ਅ ਕੰਪਲਿਕੇਟਿਡ ਐਂਡ ਕੰਪਲੈਕਸ ਜਰਨੀ which we took on the stage so i remember one of my favorite scenes where 5 kg of flour is poured over me when uh, this character is really pining and uh, pining for her beloved and she is reciting what she is feeling the churning that she is feeling inside and as an actor i learned that how even i learned the discipline that how even if 5 kg of flour is being poured on you and you are reciting 
how to take the breath, how not to let it go in your nostrils, in your mouth, and keep on reciting with great uh, Zen precision. Pali wari stage utte, jo tusi kende ho olfactory nerve da istamal hoya. Jada matlab smell, sound te, visual te hunde, par touch bhi hunde, par smell da pali wari all pervasive jo pure twade theatre which bus chande uda priyog hoya. Aur menu yaat hai jada si a show Japan which kite and you know the Japanese are very detailed and sab kuch na vaste worked out hunde ki wo wings which they used to have these uh, jo smell nu pull out karde hai ki kithe koi darshak object na karan ki smell kyunki alien smells hai japanese smells nahi hai jab tusi hor deshan vich karde ho oda vi dhyan rakhna pende so it was a very interesting journey jab tusi list page te si 10 kilo atta पांच किलो चावल, दस किलो आलू, क्योंकि तो सी दर्शकानु भी खा रहे सी बेसन, people would wonder कि कोई दुकान खोलने वास्ते सानु कह रही है या नाटक कर रही है, so it was quite funny the whole business of it. Neelam's imagery is so strong. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much. I mean, I don't think I need to add anything. Hello. Okay. I don't think I need to add anything more to the visual experience that you must have had. And um, I mean, I can go on and on about that play, which I think is one of the masterpieces of Indian theater um, that we have. And it really gives us um, a perceptive perception of how one can really um, tweak one can really explore the experiential impact that one can create on stage and all of them are extremely gender you know like she says in japan probably it also created um, a different smell and everything i remember when we got the play to chennai we did because museum theater does not allow you to light a fire on stage you can't even actually smoke a cigarette on stage uh in the museum theater because it's constructed of wood so we actually performed in another stage in Pinadar, and uh, everybody got samosas and jalebis at the end of the show which was a perk i think now there's, there's also an additional thing in neelam's play all the chorus that you saw except the lead actor uh, ramanjit who spoke they all belong to a community called knuckles N-A-Q-Q-A-L, if you want to really go and um, look at it. So they had mixed, uh, their, they have a performance tradition and their performances are done dressed up as a woman. So it is the male members who will perform and uh, by faith they are uh, Muslims, but they do Ramayana, Mahabharata story, everything. And they perform and she worked with that community for contemporary theater which also made it so much more interesting and she has written a lot about it. And that brings us to the next thing of how are we going to deal with something like female impersonation? What happens when um, a male actor is performing the female roles? As all of you know, including Mohini Atam, we have greatest artists uh, in Kathakali, you know, who do the female roles are considered very, very special. And the whole uh, experience of learning and processing and performing are very different. We also have Kutu, where we still have uh, female impersonators. Now, uh, there is a gram, there is a play written by Sati Shalekar called uh, Begum Barve. If you are interested, you can go. And, uh, it's available in English. But then what Anuradha Kapoor, who was a, who retired as NSD director, she did was to do a play based on the autobiography written by a Gujarati female impersonator called Jai Shankar. And he was called Jai Shankar Sundari. Sundari is the name of Desdemona for which he was very popular at that time. And uh, he wrote his autobiography. So based on that autobiography, she did a play called Sundari, an actor prepares. And I remember that play was performed in Kerala way back in 1999. 
when we had the first women's theater festival organized by Kerala Sangeet Nadak Academy. So uh, you can read that. So she says, your whole body is a social script. And, uh, and the performance of gender is an act that is governed by various uh, conventions that we have. Now, in this play, you will see how she is working with, let's say, Ravi Verma's image, artists like Neelima Sheikh and Bupin Kakar, and how they worked on it. So she's really trying to see this as one aspect of a performance uh, tradition which continued or is still continuing in many parts of the country. So this is a documentary that was prepared, prepared by, uh, that was produced by Majlis, um, headed by Madhushri Datta and Flavia at that time, who documented from that field. So this is a clip from that documentation. Uh, I suppose we have seen these yeah. and made him say, we may look at some of the possible postures for you. Uh, 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 this is the painting. So this uh, table will probably be on the road. Mostly, you are always having a visual of Ravi Varma constantly visible on the wings. जहाँ तक मुझे याद आता है विस्नगर का आज ये कोलाहल भरा स्टेशन रोड उस समय निर्जन सा लगता था। छोटे से नीम के पेड़ वाला घर, आसपास पाटीदार, नायक, भोजक, अन्य जातियों के मकान, बाहरी चमक कम, पैसा भी कम, पर अंतर शांति से समृद्ध। हमारे घर के कोने में मेरे दादा त्रिभुवन दास के स्वर तानपुरे के साथ � he does not absorb the color quickly. Hmm? Hmm. Oh, I'm going to continue that hmm. all through. Niluka beetle cook it not chowder. Share the YouTube links for those of you who are interested. Now, Bupen Kakar, the male painter that you saw there, is one of our earliest gay painter from Gujarat. Um, so there is another other Gujarat that we should remember, like Gandhi's Gujarat. Uh, you know, because we are soon forgetting that Gujarat. Now. We'll move to the next slide. We, we won't have our way. No need. We'll skip. No, no. We'll skip. Yeah. I'm moving on to sexuality, which is our last point, where we are really talking about sexuality that one lives with. And they are all there in the society, but they are all marginalized. So let's just look at some of the images that you have, all of them from within India. Next slide. Yeah, this is the Sex Workers Union, uh, DMSC, which is there in Bengal, which is one of the largest sex workers union that you have. And one of the states where medical facilities for sex workers are, um, are provided with a lot of decency. You know, and you also have a very strong movement in Maharashtra. Yeah, next slide. This is Sushma Deshpande, a theater artist based out of Pune, who did this play um, called um, sorry. 
couldn't this play based on a tamasha artist and um, and this is a performance that she did in chennai here and tamasha as you know is one of the earliest secular um, sensuous form is the women especially the dalit women were asked to dance lavani and uh, get their customers and this is what became our bollywood dance and as metamorphosized into various other popular kinds of dance forms that you have yeah the next slide this is from one of our earliest play in 2003 uh, called call of the heart uh, which is the first play which the trans uh, theater group called kannadi kalakuru who they performed and uh, as you can see we are using hair as the motif as something that really kind of symbolizes uh what it means to them in terms of ide their identity in order to grow hair now um what i want to share with you is a play that we did in 2008 i think uh just before the section 377 became decriminalized in the 2009 and this is a play called musical chair with a group of people um in bangalore in a group called lesbic um uh, and uh, the artist is uh, you're going to it's in malayalam this particular bit so we share their stories in the form of a performance called musical chair and um, let's just listen to the Yeah, <laughs> 
എന്റെ പേര് എന്ത് മാത്രം ശ്രദ്ധയാണെന്ന് അറിയാമോ ഞാൻ നാടന്ന ആ കുറ്റം ഇരുന്ന ആ കുറ്റം കൈ ഇങ്ങനെ വെച്ച ആ കുറ്റം ഇത് എന്റെ സ്റ്റൈലല്ലേ എനിക്ക് അയാളോട് പറയാൻ പറ്റുമോ അങ്ങനെ എന്നെ ശ്രദ്ധിച്ച് 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 പാവം അയാൾക്ക് ജോലി ശ്രദ്ധിക്കാൻ കഴിഞ്ഞു എന്നോട് പറയാമായിരുന്നു എന്തോ ഏതായാലും അവസാനം എനിക്ക് അവർ ഉപകാരം ചെയ്തു തന്നു എന്റെ ജോലി എടുത്ത് കളഞ്ഞു അല്ല ഞാനും ഒരു പെണ്ണല്ലേ എനിക്ക് വലിയ വികാമം എനിക്ക് സെക്സും വേണം ജോലിയും വേണം അവസാനം അവശേഷിച്ചത് ഒരു വഴി മാത്രം സെക്സ് അവിടെയും പ്രശ്നങ്ങൾ തീരുന്നില്ല പോലീസ് ഗുണ്ട അല്ല നിങ്ങൾ തന്നെ പറയൂ ഒരാളുടെ മനസ്സിൽ ഇഷ്ടപ്പെട്ട പോലെ ജീവിക്കുന്നത് തെറ്റാണോ ഇതാണോ ഈ സമൂഹത്തിന്റെ ന്യായം താങ്ക് യു now when we did that play um way back and um deepu was living in uh, bangalore at that time and also and deepu is a trans man uh born as a woman but uh, felt that he is a man and uh, hadn't done all the surgeries but he was a trans man uh and was a driver earning his livelihood as a a uh, driver who drives auto car everything and um, after a while when when he thought he was confident he came back to kerala uh with his partner and we all thought okay that's good you're going back to your home and uh, unfortunately within a year um he he jumped into in front of the railway track and we lost him. and uh, stories of trans suicides are still continuing and uh, it's something that we are all dealing with and it's very difficult and deepu was one of my most favorite actors so if you can see we are really playing with gender there because he was a trans man who was trying to tell a story of a trans woman but who was still biologically um looking a bit female but was feeling like a man so there were all these interesting things and i thought he did a fabulous job in a very very simple role like that and at that time um i used to think that he should apply to trishur school of drama or national school of drama and really take up theater as a profession and i was stalking him into it but unfortunately we lost him but thankfully in kerala now i know that there is a trans group called maravil dwani who have produced parayan maranna kadai directed by shijit one of the artists who have been working with me for years and i am extremely happy at that group is taking performance really really seriously and i think they have already performed close to 50 shows or even more and are able to continue that show in kerala you know and this is something that's always puzzling for me why are our drama schools uh, not accepting these people as our students you know or why are established theater companies not really having uh, i'm not saying you should have a separate group for th- trans people but i'm just saying why can't trans people who are trained like any other male or female be part of your group now i think um, i can be i'm very proud and happy that in tamil nadu at least there are few of us in whose group we have a mixed gender uh, casting we don't we don't really stand by uh, the identities that they are fighting for but they are all artists they are trained and they will perform they will deliver whatever you can deliver and uh, i can name at least four five artists who are fully trained and who can really take on any role that you want be it a female male trans queer whatever role that one uh, that you assign to them that you want to be, they you want them to play now i'm moving on to where we are right now where and i think if you had listened to anything to do with gender some 10 years ago we would all start with that we will say okay there is a dowry problem there is a rape problem there there is domestic abuse and um, so gendering always meant that you are addressing the way the society is dealing with um, the women the kind of patriarchal structures that are leaving 
so unfortunately what what is happening and what happened in tamil nadu was the number of cases that we had of child sexual abuse from some of the most popular uh, schools that we have in the city so we are not talking about some remote village where the child was going alone to shear you know cattle uh, rearing and then she you know it was not that these people were middle class people who were paying lakhs and lakhs and sending them to schools and we started having all all those things for the past two years it has been much more in your face kind of thing i'm sure it was there so now the government has is also woken up to the fact because there were so many suicides after child sexual abuse and uh, so they have a complaint box they're trying to train the teacher and there is a helpline for child sexual abuse in tamil nadu and what we did as data people was to produce a play called ulluram ulluram inner resolve and we did not want it to be about the violence itself but it is about understanding that and unpacking how that violence really comes and this was again built as a group we 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 kind of had a counselor we had teachers we had all the records of instagram facebook all those documents that all these um, children have recalled after i uh, god knows how many years so they're not being abused now they are survivors but still it is haunting them so this is a play called ulluram and i think what we really what you're going to see can we just throw them the last slide um the yeah so what we are really saying is that you you have to speak out and you have to speak up so you cannot just show the slide uh, tojo um so what we are talking about is the difficulty that the child faces in order to speak to people who are very very close to them the mother father or friends and others so one needs to also speak out and the others who are listening to them should also know what to really do so our message if at all there is a message is to stay safe and take care so this is a very short play which we wanted to perform if the uh, lecture was um, offline but i thought we shouldn't lose out on the performance so we are going to share with you a very small excerpt which comes in the middle of the performance um we have an artist called sadashi who is going to be performing it for you and uh, it is um it's a very brief uh, kind of presentation you need to pin her screen once she comes up uh, sadashi screen so you can go to the participant list and please pin her up um and it's a section where she is aware that she becomes aware that this is what happened to her um while um uh, she she's rethinking on what happened and she's deciding what to really do in that uh, stage it's in tamil but i'm hoping that you will understand thank you so much over to sadash college padikumbodhu nadantha pattana onnu illa naanga la oru naadagam potom poduva enak naadagathla pudichade costumes da inda ellaru ore mari dress pannikittu மேக்கப்பே இல்லாம பண்ற வீதி நாடகத்துல எனக்கு அவ்வளவு விருப்பம் இல்ல சும்மா லேசான விஷயம் நினைச்சிட்டு தான் போனேன் நாடகம் செய்யறதும் ஈஸியா தான் இருந்தது மூடி கிடந்த கதவுகள் முற்றுகை தளர்ந்தது மூடி கிடந்த கதவுகள் முற்றுகை தளர்ந்தது தேடி தேடி அழுத்த வாழ்வில் பாதை ஒன்று தெரியுது தேடி தேடி 
அழுத்தவாழ்வில் பாதையொன்று தெரியுது யுகங்களின் மௌனத்தை இன்று நாம் கலக்கிறோம் யுகங்களின் மௌனத்தை இன்று நாம் கலக்கிறோம் சேருவோம் தோழி நாம் சோர்வகற்றி சேருவோம் மூடி கிடந்த கதவுகள் பொறுமையே உயர்வு என்னும் பொய்மையை புறக்கணி பொறுமையே உயர்வு என்னும் பொய்மையை புறக்கணி அடக்கி அடக்கி நம்மை ஏய்க்கும் சிந்தனையை சிதறடி அடக்கி அடக்கி நம்மை ஏய்க்கும் சிந்தனையை சிதறடி உணர்வுகள் மரத்து நாம் உயிர் பிழைத்தல் தேவையோ உணர்வுகள் மரத்து நாம் உயிர் பிழைத்தல் தேவையோ உண்டு நமக்கு உறுதி என்று உலகிற்கின்று உணர்த்துவோம் உண்டு நமக்கு உறுதி என்று உலகிற்கின்று உணர்த்துவோம் மூடிக்கிடந்த கதவுகள் முற்றுகை தளர்ந்தது நாங்க பார்த்து முடிச்சப்பறம் நாங்க செஞ்சு முடிச்சப்பறம் பார்த்தவங்க சொன்ன கதைங்க எப்படி சொல்றது உண்மை சுடும் அப்படிதான் இருந்துச்சு நிறைய சின்ன சின்ன பொண்ணுங்க ஸ்கூல்ல தெருவுல பஸ் ஸ்டாண்ட்ல வீட்டுல சினிமா தேட்டர் பாத்ரூம் போற வழியில கோவில்ல எல்லாருமே தெரிஞ்சவங்க உறவுக்காரங்க அப்பா தாத்தா வயசு காரங்க பெரும்பாலும் அவங்க தினம் பாக்குறவங்க செய்யறதுலாம் செஞ்சுட்டு இது நமக்குள்ள இருக்கிற சீக்ரெட் யாருட்டையும் சொல்லக்கூடாது அப்படின்னு அந்த குழந்தைங்களை அன்பா மிரட்டுறாங்க அவங்க சொல்ல சொல்ல ஒரு கோவிட் ஸ்கூல்ல வகுப்புல ஆம்பளவாதியார் ஜோக் அடிக்கிறாரு பொம்பளைங்க மே சட்டையில ஏன் பாக்கெட் தைக்கிறது இல்ல ஏன்னா மலைப்பகுதியில சிக்னல் கிடைக்காதா ஜோக்குங்க சிரிக்கணும் பப்ளிக்கா பண்ணிட்டா தப்பு இல்லைன்னு நம்ம விதி கிளாஸ்ல ஒரு பொண்ணை கட்டி பிடிக்கிறது ஆக்சிடென்டா படுற மாதிரியே தொடரது ட்ரெஸ் பத்தி கமெண்ட் அடிக்கிறது வேட்டி கட்டி பட்ட போட்டு பக்தி பழமா வர்றவரு வேட்டி அட்ஜஸ்ட் பண்ற மாதிரியே தானூறு பக்காட்டுறது போன்ல ஆபாச வெப்சைட் அனுப்புறது ராவுல வீடியோ கால் பண்றது வெறும் துண்டை கட்டிக்கிட்டு ஆன்லைன் கிளாஸ் எடுக்க வர்றது இந்த அழகுல வகுப்பு மாணவர்கள் பாய்ஸ் அண்ட் கேர்ள்ஸ் ஒருத்தரோட ஒருத்தர் பேசக்கூடாது அப்படின்னு இவங்க மாரல் போலீசிங் பண்றாங்க இந்த சிக்கல்லாம் மாணவிகளுக்கு மட்டும் இல்ல அப்படிலாம் நினைச்சிடாதீங்க மாணவர்களுக்கும் இருந்திருக்கு போன் கொண்டு வந்திருக்கானு செக் பண்றதுக்கு உடம்பு முழுக்க தடவுறது இதுக்கெல்லாம் நோ மாட்டேன் அப்படின்னு சொன்னா 
ப்ராஜெக்ட் மார்க் கிடைக்காது மெரட்டல் ஓ நீ அந்த மாதிரி ஆளு தானே அப்படின்னு முத்திரை எல்லாம் தான் கிடைக்கும் இதுக்கு பெண்ணாசிரியர்களும் ஒண்ணும் விதிவிலக்கு இல்ல கிளாஸ்ல ஒரு மாணவி கையறுத்துக்கிட்டப்போ அட்டென்ஷன் சீக்கி சும்மா தேவை இல்லாம அப்படின்னு எந்த ஒரு புரிதலும் இல்லாம சொல்லிருக்காங்க இதுல சாதிய சொல்லி வீட்டு நிலைய சொல்லி வர கிண்டல் கேலி எல்லாம் இத்தனைக்கும் நிறைய பேர் வீட்டுல சொல்லிருக்காங்க மாணவர்களும் சொல்லிருக்காங்க எல்லாம் செவிடங்கார்ல ஊர்ன சங்குதான் அப்படியும் வெளியே சொல்ல ஆரம்பிச்சு கடைசியில போலீஸ் போன அப்புறம் நிரூபணம் ஆகாம ஆசிரியரை ஒன்னும் பண்ணாதீங்க இந்த காலத்து டீனேஜ் பிள்ளைகள்லாம் குழந்தைகளே இல்ல அவெல்லாம் நெட்ஃபிளிக்ஸ்ல அடல்ட் படம் பாக்குறா அப்படின்னு திருவாய் மலர்ந்திருக்கார் நம்ம நாட்டுல சென்டர்ல ஆளும் கட்சியில இருக்கிறவர் கடவுள் பேர சொல்லி குழந்தைங்களை கசக்கிறவரு இங்க சாமியார் கடவுளையே இவங்க ஒழுக்க விதிக்கு ஏத்த மாதிரி தானே மாத்துறாங்க துப்பட்டா போடாம வர்றத துப்பட்டா போடாம வர்றத பாக்குற சாமிகளுக்கு ஆசாமிகளுக்கு ஒரு மாதிரி ஆயிடுமா இதுங்கெல்லாம் பிஞ்சிலியே பழுத்ததுங்க இப்படி அலைய விடுறாங்களே இவங்க அப்பனா சொல்லணும் இப்படி வசனம் வேற ஆனா ஆம்பளைங்க சட்டையே இல்லாம இருக்கலாம் வெறும் முண்டா பனியின போட்டுக்கிட்டு தெருவில் நின்றுக்கிட்டு கக்கத்தை சொரியலாம் கிடைச்ச குட்டி சவருக்கு நின்று ஒன்னு குட்டி சவருக்கிட்ட நின்று ஒண்ணுக்கு போகலாம் தொப்ப கீஞ்சிருமோனு பயப்படுற அளவுக்கு டைட்டா ஷர்ட்டு டீஷர்ட் எல்லாம் போட்டுக்கலாம் அதெல்லாம் ஸ்டைலு அதே ஸ்டைல பொண்ணுங்க செஞ்சா ஊர் சுத்துறவ எப்படி இருக்கு இதெல்லாம் கேட்டப்போ இதெல்லாம் கேட்டப்போ எனக்கும் அதான் நடந்ததுன்னு தோணுச்சு நாங்க குழந்தைகளா இருந்தோம் ஆனா அவங்க பெரியவங்களா நடந்துக்கல நாங்க குழந்தைகளா இருந்தோம் ஆனா அவங்க பெரியவங்களா நடந்துக்கல நாங்க குழந்தைகளா இருந்தோம் நாங்க குழந்தைகளா இருந்தோம் ஆனா அவங்க பெரியவங்களா நடந்துக்கல நாங்க குழந்தைகளா தாங்க இருந்தோம் ஆனா அவங்க பெரியவங்களா நடந்துக்கல நாங்க குழந்தைகளா தாங்க இருந்தோம் ஆனா அவங்க பெரியவங்களா நடந்துக்கல பொறுப்பான பெரியவங்களா நடந்துக்கல தேங்க்யூ சதாஷ் Thanks so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Um, so I really want to kind of leave you with this, you know. So somewhere I think uh, embodying gender on stage 
is something that we need to keep ourselves questioning, reflecting over and over about both the form as well as the content and the space which we try and create on stage. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I thank especially um, Tojo for making this so smooth because I'm really not technically equipped to do this and I think he helped. Everything goes really, really smooth. Thanks, Suja, for sparing the time and uh, helping us put this through. Thank you all once again. Thank you so much. Amazing speech and performance here, man. I have no words to express the way you charmed and motivated us. Thank you for sharing your great knowledge on embedding gender on stage. Thank you so much for your wisdom. Thank you, Sadashi, for this amazing performance. Thank you, Tojo, for your timely coordination and technical support. It's time for our open discussion. Dear listeners, please feel free to ask your concerns Encouragement, enthusiasm, excellence in discussions. Come forward, yes. Open up about the valuable insights you received through the wonderful endowment lecture. You can ask in any language you feel comfortable. Uh, I think I will. I I I I will start. Uh, I I thank you, uh, Dr. Monga. After a long time, we are meet, we are meeting over this uh, 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 this online uh, mirror. And, uh, see, you know, I congratulate you for a very very. Excellent audiovisual presentation because you know what is happening now in the theater in Tamil Nadu, and uh, you are very, very familiar in Kerala also. You no, know, whenever I used to talk to <laughs> theater people, everybody asked, How is Manga? Eh? Uh, how she performs, whether her new productions. Uh, are staging in this uh, corona pandemic time and all that. Anyway, I am thankful to you. Uh, just to one thing I want to know specifically from you uh, with regard to uh, your uh, choice of uh, subject. Because you have elaborately uh, 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 narrated about the body space and all that. Uh, my only uh, not a question, but my, my, my observation uh, regarding the body of the performer. See, you have focused on, focused or concentrated more on the content side of the gender-centric presentations. I want to specifically uh, from you that how the body of the performer behaves in a gender-centric theater. The bo body is the, so the body is exactly a social construct, and uh, that social con construct how the body behaves uh, in a gender-centric performance. I think that also is uh, a very, very important aspect of uh, your uh, area of uh, uh, presentation. Uh, can you pay some light on that? It will be, I think, 
more more, more <laughs> yeah. good to that okay thank you thank you so much thanks so much for that question um i i mean i wish we were having this uh, offline and you know and um, so the kind of question that you are asking is something that needs to be um experienced by each person within each group because it it varies but then i think most often when we are talking about training a performer uh one of the things that i i mean despite all the traditional uh you know whatever whatever qualities that we need whether it is training in various forms uh body voice and mind that we are talking about uh which we train also improvisation all that but i think when you are going to be extremely conscious or aware of gender it is important to create a performance space both in our rehearsal in the green room on stage everything a space that is safe for everyone you know where i i may have to act as somebody who as a wife who is beaten up by the husband and these are characters and i will act but i shouldn't actually be scared of the actor who is playing the husband am i making sense you know so there needs to be among for us as actors we should have the perfect sync that we talk about where i'm not worried you know so my co actor should know if i'm going to slip on stage they will give me a hand so i think that would be the first criterion in terms of gender centric yeah. kind of thing but i think it yeah. it gets to other uh, people also not not just the it's a playwright it is the co actors it is the lights you know for example i do an extremely uh, revolutionary mixed gender cast group and my light person does not believe like me and uh, he or she thinks that a trans body a male or a female is only used for begging you know so they they can spoil my whole show with the kind of lighting that they will give huh. especially if it is going to be a mixed mixed kind of a uh, cast so they will probably kind of make sure that they highlight uh, a very chivalric macho male and a very traditionally conservative obedient good looking uh, cisgendered women and not really focus on the kind of uh, actor the the role that the trans people are playing or the queer people are play you know that is also one of the questions that i think film people should really know how do you present a body that is queer on stage you know so technically i think it is first of all about the safety that gives you a certain comfort and to be at ease to be comfortable about who you are which would be something that we need to really develop and very often we don't get the time <laughs> because you have to produce a play so you are rushing everybody you will you will hear stories about directors yelling at the actors um now that's a very common kind of thing but i think um uh, yes the production is important but you also need to be extremely sensitive about i still remember i had one character in in a play that i did on both sides which is talking about that manipur manorama case where she has to say there were five bullet shot into her vagina and she was a muslim girl uh, studying in college and all of course uh, certainly upper middle class but the difficulty was to say the word vagina comfortable it was not comfortable so the moment i say vagina comfortably looking into this camera you don't you know it's like saying my hand my leg my chin my eyes but then if i'm going to say uh, you know they shot five bullets into her which i know if i'm going to say that then i am not the actor is not comfortable with her own body and the word that she is uh, addressing so i think that is where we need to really work hard 
Thank you so much, Dr. Rajendra Babu, for that question. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, especially for the last uh, last part of your reply, because yeah. eh, because e even even the male and female performers they they are sometimes afraid or shame uh, to to utter certain words in theater, certain words of the text. Yeah. Even it also is a, a problem uh, for the gender centric presentation. Anyway, anyway, thank you, Manka. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Girish, if there are no more questions, can we wrap up? Okay, definitely. Yeah. Suja, can you hear me? You can continue. Yes, ma'am, I have a doubt, ma'am. Sure. Uh, in Mahaswada story, Mahaswada Devi story, globally, which you have shown to in uh, theater mode, uh, there is a question: How can you clothe me again? <coughs> Even in movies such as hit song Sami Sami, they uh, they are popular because they know how to exploit female body. For the popularity of movies, my question is that: Is there any chance, uh, like uh, armed force, uh, protest against armed force special power act, uh, women will come, uh, be, uh, come into the social activities, uh, uh, knowing their power? Uh, even uh, the only mode uh, in the actual mode, they are using whole body for expressing. Uh, the thoughts and uh, thoughts, but uh, in uh, movies they are not using, they are not uh, exploiting uh, the uh, uh, other than their uh, publicity stunts or uh, wrong popularity, they are not using whole body as a tool for uh, expressions. My question is that there is any chance women will come forward into uh, uh, knowing the power of body for social movements and other than protests and so for social movements and actions. Yeah. I think so. I think they will. And I think uh, Malayalam film industry ha is one of the few industries which has such strong, powerful artists. You know, I mean, um, I forget her name, Lijo, Lijo Jos, right? Who did JB and uh, Sai Palavi. I mean, they, they are creating waves. So they are actually creating that they can be beautiful, they can be very attractive, they, but they can also be equally uh, respectable, dignified. And so I think it is about creating a context for that. So, I mean, we can't blame the artists. I mean, you, you have that song, no? Um, that Telugu. I mean, it's also there in other languages, Mama which created waves. Now the song itself, the lyric, is something that is really saying everything against a male gaze. But the visual is, you know, it's, it's just playing into the gay, male gaze. So which is where there is no gender understanding. And if you really know, see that particular film, the other song where the lover is dancing, it is also exactly like the same song. So if you're saying, okay, this is an item number, therefore Samantha danced like that. But what about the lover dance? She also dances like that. So in other words, erotica or being sensuous in itself is not at all to be censured. I mean, I think... In India, we have enough censorship. We don't need to censor them. But I think we can talk with dignity about the most embarrassing subject, the words, the content, everything. I think it is possible. I mean, for once, I think it will be nice 
if the directors and the producers and other technical people listen to thinking women thank you yeah thank you so much ma'am Any more questions? I think uh, we can conclude our session. Yeah. Sure. Thank you so much for the wonderful question, Dr. C. D. Rajendra Babu sir. Thank you, ma'am, for this wonderful uh, answers, and thank you so much. Uh, Mangi, ma'am, for this insightful, thought-provoking words, you inspired me a lot. Thank you so much, ma'am. May you. I request Mehna Sajan and his student to propose for the plan. Uh, Suja, uh, felicitation by uh, Dr. C. G. Ranjan. No, no, I think there is no need of a felicitation now. Okay, okay, you know, then we can go ahead. Yeah, because after after a good uh, a good performance, uh, yeah. we have to. Uh, we have to wait for the fall of the curtain, uh, uh, and uh, the performance is over. Then, what is the meaning or <laughs> the meaning of a felicitation? And uh, I think uh, uh, Manga has given a very, very uh, fantastic audio visual presentation. And uh, uh, as I said earlier, she is the uh, very, very. Uh, active face in Tamil uh, theatre, and especially the women's theatre movement. Even in Kerala, she is very uh, famous for her uh, uh, thoughts and performances. Uh, one word about KPAC, because this endowment lecture is a respect or tribute to the great legendary theatre organisation named the Kerala People's. arts club or kpsc uh the place of kpsc i think uh, banga knows it very well that uh, it paves the way for a societal transformation in kerala uh, so that is the importance of this domain lecture uh, and definitely in the future years also uh, dr manga will be with us uh hopefully with us uh, for our uh, departments uh forthcoming uh, endeavors thank you thank you maka thank you thank you so much sir may may mehna sajan for proposing what of thanks thank you sujit ji hi everyone today we successfully completed 2022 KPSC Golden Jubilee Celebrations Endowment Lecture on the basis of embodying gender on stage by the honorable guest Dr. V. Padma. Namaskaram. 2022 KPSC Golden Jubilee Celebrations Endowment Prabhashna Parambara. In the vade, Vijayagaramai Pothiya Irikkuyan. Madhra Sarvagalashala Malayala Vibhagathin Abhi Mukhitra Narthiya Moon Endowment Lecture Galum. Valare Vijayagaramai Pothiya Kuvan. Namukk Saadishu Yandu. Veliya Sandoshan Therana Gaiden Dennyana. Karanam. ഓഫ്ലൈനായി ആയി നടത്തേണ്ടിയിരുന്ന എൻഡോമെന്റ് പ്രഭാഷണങ്ങൾ കോവിഡിന്റെ ഈ മൂന്നാം തരംഗത്തിൽ നമ്മൾ വീണ്ടും ഓൺലൈനായി തന്നെ നടത്തിയിരിക്കുകയാണ് എങ്കിലും ഒരു സന്തോഷിക്കാവുന്ന ഒരു കാര്യം എന്താന്ന് വെച്ച് കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ഓൺലൈനായി നടത്തിയത് കൊണ്ട് തന്നെ ലോകത്തിന്റെ പല കോണുകളിൽ ഇരുന്ന് പല ആളുകൾ ഈ മൂന്ന് ദിവസങ്ങളിലായി നമ്മുടെ പ്രഭാഷണ പരമ്പരയിൽ സജീവ സാന്നിധ്യമായിരുന്നു എന്നതും നമുക്ക് വലിയ സന്തോഷം തരുന്ന കാര്യം തന്നെയാണ് ഔപചാരികമായി ഇന്ന് ഈ പ്രഭാഷണ പരമ്പരയിൽ നന്ദി രേഖപ്പെടുത്തുക എന്നതാണ് എന്റെ കടമ ഞാൻ അതിലേക്ക് തന്നെ കിടക്കട്ടെ ആദ്യം തന്നെ മദ്രാസ് സർവകലാശാല മലയാള വിഭാഗത്തിന്റെ വകുപ്പ് അധ്യക്ഷൻ ഡോക്ടർ പി എം ഗിരീഷ് ആദ്യ ദിവസം മുതൽ അവസാന ദിവസം വരെ ഇന്ന് വരെ ഈ പരിപാടി സംഘടിപ്പിക്കുകയും അതിന് ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് മാർഗനിർദ്ദേശങ്ങൾ തരികയും ചെയ്ത ഞങ്ങളുടെ പ്രിയപ്പെട്ട ഗിരീഷ് മാഷിന് നന്ദി രേഖപ്പെടുത്തുന്നു മലയാളം ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റിന്റെ ക്ഷണം സ്വീകരിച്ച് വീഡിയോ വഴി അധ്യക്ഷ പ്രസംഗം നടത്തുകയും ഓൺലൈനായി ഇവിടെ സാന്നിധ്യം അറിയിക്കുകയും ചെയ്ത എസ് എസ് പിള്ളൈ സാറിന് മദ്രാസ് സർവകലാശാല മലയാള വിഭാഗത്തിന്റെ പേര് ഞാൻ ഔപചാരികമായി നന്ദി രേഖപ്പെടുത്തുകയാണ് യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി ഓഫ് മദ്രാസ് മലയാളം ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റ് വുഡ് ലൈക് ടു താങ്ക് ഡോക്ടർ വി പത്മ ഫോർ അക്സെപ്റ്റിംഗ് അവർ ഇൻവിറ്റേഷൻ ആൻഡ് കമ്മിങ് ഹിയർ ഓൺ ദിസ് ഡേ എംബോഡിങ് ജെൻഡർ ഓൺ സ്റ്റേജ് വാസ് എ വെരി അലഗൻ ലെക്ചർ ആൻഡ് ദിസ് ടോപ്പിക് ഇസ് വെരി റെലവൻറ്റ് ടു അവർ സൊസൈറ്
and i'm very proud for being part of this ma'am i'm really proud of this uh, and one thing ma'am once day uh, girish sir was taking taking the subject on our classes uh, while speaking to us women protest against indian army uh, it was more emotional for us when we saw that video now after that and once again we uh, thank you uh, we all thanking you for giving such a wonderful lecture on this program thank you thank you so much ma'am thank you sada sadashi b for that wonderful play you have played here ഇന്ന് ഈ പരിപാടിയിൽ സംബന്ധിച്ച ഡോക്ടർ സി ജി രാജേന്ദ്ര ബാബു സാർ ഗിരീഷ് ഗിരീഷ് സാർ സുജ സവിതം എന്നിവർക്കും ഞാൻ ഔപചാരികമായി നന്ദി രേഖപ്പെടുത്തുകയാണ് പങ്കെടുത്ത വിശിഷ്ട വ്യക്തിത്വങ്ങൾക്കും അധ്യാപകർക്കും അസാന്നിധ്യമെങ്കിലും സന്തോഷമാശനം മദ്രാസ് സർവകലാശാല മലയാള വിഭാഗത്തിന്റെ പേരിൽ നന്ദി രേഖപ്പെടുത്തുന്നു മദ്രാസ് സർവകലാശാല മലയാള വിഭാഗം എൻഡോമെന്റ് പ്രഭാഷണ പരമ്പരകൾക്ക് ഗൂഗിൾ മീറ്റിലൂടെ സാങ്കേതികമായ എല്ലാ സഹായങ്ങളും ചെയ്തു തന്ന ടോജോയ്ക്കും ഈ അവസരത്തിൽ ഞാൻ നന്ദി രേഖപ്പെടുത്തുകയാണ് ഇന്നത്തെ പരിപാടി വളരെ മനോഹരമായി കോമ്പയർ ചെയ്ത ഞങ്ങളുടെ പ്രിയപ്പെട്ട സുജി ചേച്ചി കവിയത്രയും എഴുത്തുകാരിയും മലയാള വിഭാഗം ഗവേഷക വിദ്യാർത്ഥിയുമായ സുജ സവിതത്തിനും ഞാൻ നന്ദി രേഖപ്പെടുത്തുന്നു മൂന്ന് ദിവസങ്ങളിലായി നടന്ന എൻഡോ ഈ പരിപാടി വിജയകരമായി പൂർത്തിയാക്കുവാൻ സഹായിച്ച ഓപ്പൺ വിൻഡോ സംഘാടകർക്കും ഭാരവാഹികൾക്കും ഞാൻ ഔപചാരികമായി നന്ദി രേഖപ്പെടുത്തുകയാണ് താങ്ക് യു എവ്രി വൺ ടു ഹു ടേക്ക് ദ ഇനിഷ്യേറ്റീവ് ഫോർ ദിസ് ഷെഡ്യൂൾ താങ്ക് യു താങ്ക് യു സോ മച്ച് Thank you, Thank you so much for your valuable participation. You can visit Department of Malayalam Genome YouTube channel to watch program again. Follow Open Window Facebook Instagram page for future program updates. We have poetry meet on 12th and 13th of February. I'm inviting you all for the same. Here I should like to wind up the program. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. And in future we yeah. can have a program sorry. offline. Sorry. 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 Sorry.